Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, America, from the beautiful Pundit Press Radio Studios. It is Friday, January the 9th, 2015, and you are listening to the Liz Laura Show, Soldier Talk Radio, on Pundit Press Radio, SHR Media, and Blog Talk Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and privilege of introducing Ms. Liz Loris. Thank you, Dan. Welcome, everyone. I want to just welcome all of my listeners out there on Pundit Press and Blog Talk Radio and SHR Media. You know, this is just such an exciting night to have the opportunity to kick off our very first show here. I want to make sure we give a special shout-out to Ken McClinton over at the Exceptional Conservative Show, because without him... This would not have been possible, and without Dan and Jane over there at Pundit Press producing this, so we just want to give a warm thanks and welcome to everyone for listening. Um, As you noticed, we had a really powerful intro, and, you know, I'm I'm hoping that I don't start crying right here in the beginning of my show. Uh, That that musical patriotic melody um, is not only near and dear to my heart, but that was sung by one of our fallen heroes, and that's uh, Sergeant Kimberly Agar. And I had the honor and the privilege of meeting her mother um, at the Miss Veteran America competition 2014, who she, she'll be on our show actually next week, so you'll want to make sure to tune in next week. Uh, we're going to be talking about suicide in the military, and we've got a real special two-hour um, time slot for that. So her mother will actually be on. So we just want to make sure that we are continuing that legacy and we're honoring her and sharing her voice with the rest of the nation as she served honorably in the Army in the, um, in the Army band. So we just want to welcome everybody. Um, we've got 
a great lineup. Like I mentioned, next next week we're doing the suicide in the military. The following week uh, we're going to be looking at sexual addiction and the emotional pain in America. We're not afraid to tackle some of those big subjects. Um, we are also we originally were going to have Sarah Marie Brenner, which a lot of you know her. Uh, she ran the Brenner Brief and had her own radio show. Her husband also serves in the Ohio Senate, um, Mr. Andrew Brenner, or Congressman Andrew Brenner. She was going to be on with us tonight. Unfortunately, she's a little bit under the weather, and so we're sending all the warm prayers and thoughts out to her that she'll get to feeling better. We're going to bring her back on on January 30th, so you'll want to make sure to tune in for that show as well. And the next on our lineup is we, um, back in, let's see, I want to say it was last month, we had some reports that came out, and Dan had covered them on one of his shows, and it was about illegal discharges in the military, and I was um, honored to get to go on his show and talk about that. We are actually bringing on the investigator that did that report on the illegal discharges in the military, and that's going to be on our February 6th show. So you'll definitely want to tune in there. We've got some really good information. I know there's a lot of my veterans out there that are excited about that show. We've been advocating for that issue for a long time. It it affects over 31,000 of our brave men and women that have served. And on deck... For March, we will be having Joel Lambert, um, who is a former Navy SEAL, on our show. He's actually um, on the Discovery Channel, Lone Target, and Manhunt. So I'm I'm personally really excited about that show um, because I always love the survival stuff. We love to honor veterans, and it's just going to be a great time to have a a guest like that on our show. So without further ado, I've got a lot of information I want to cover with you tonight. Um, We are going to talk a little bit about being chosen Um, in the first half of the show. uh, Dan the Man Butcher has got us covered for our weekly news, so we're going to break away about halfway through the show for that. And then we're going to close out the show. Um, You know, we have to, like in the military, adapt and overcome. So with having our, (laughs) our own Sarah Marie Brenner not feeling well tonight, we're actually going to do kind of something a little bit different. We're going to kind of deviate from um, the original mission plan, and we're going to do a little section on Liz Luris Unplugged. So the things that you don't hear (laughs) from the footnotes of my typical testimony. So without further ado, Dan, if you've got any other comments, I know we've got an exciting clip to um, have our listeners hear. Oh, you bet. You know what? It's just a. It's it, this is a very. I'm I'm honored to be a part of this tonight. This is. We were talking off the air. You know, we we had two minutes left before we came to the air, and this show's been. You know, in the last eight weeks of planning, and here it was two minutes to go till showtime and and you could just feel the you could just feel the excitement <laughs> you know ready for tonight's show and it it's it's i think your the listeners are in for a real treat uh with Liz tonight and in all of her future shows and with that why don't we get into the clip that you wanted to play Liz and uh, I'm going to cue that up and get it going right now for you oh excellent i am grateful to be have been loved and to be loved now, and to be able to love, because that liberates. Love liberates. It doesn't just hold. That's ego. Love liberates. When uh, when my son was born, I was 17. My mother had a huge house, 14-room house. At 17, I went to her and said, I'm leaving. She asked me, you're leaving my house? And she had live-in help. I said, yes, I've found a job, and I've got a room with cooking privileges down the hall, and the landlady will be the babysitter. She asked me, you're leaving my house? I said, yes, ma'am, and you're taking the baby? I said, yes. She said, all right, remember this. When you step over my door sill... You've been raised. You know the difference between right and wrong. 
do right. Don't let anybody raise you and make you change. And remember this, you can always come home. I went home every time life slammed me down and made me call it uncle. I went home with my baby. My mother never once acted as I told you so. She said, oh, baby's home. Oh, my darling, mom's going to cook you something. Mother's going to make this for you. Love. She liberated me to life. She continued to do that. When uh, my son may have been five years old, my mother uh, would pick him up all the time and feed him. And I went to her once a month, and she would cook for me. So one day I went to her house, and she would cooked red rice, which I loved. After we finished eating, we walked down the hill, and she started across the street. She said, wait a minute, baby. I was 22 years old. She said, wait a minute, baby. You know, I think you're the greatest woman I've ever met. She said, Mary McLeod Bethune, Eleanor Roosevelt, and my mother, you're in that category. Then she said, give me a kiss. I gave her a kiss, and I got onto the streetcar. I can remember the way the sun fell on the slats of the wooden seats. I sat there and I thought about her. I thought, suppose she's right. She's intelligent. And she's, she says she's too mean to lie. So suppose I am going to be somebody. She released me. She freed me to say I may have something in me. That would be of value. Maybe not just to me. See? That's love. And when she was in her final sickness, I went out to San Francisco. And the doctor said she had three three weeks to live. I asked her, would you come to North Carolina? She had emphysema and lung cancer. I brought her to my home. She lived for a year and a half. And when she was finally, finally, in extremis, she was on oxygen and finding cancer for her life. And I remembered her liberating me. And I said, I hope I'll be able to liberate her. She deserved that from me. She deserved a great daughter, and she got one. So in her last days, I said, now, I understand that some people need permission to go. As I understand it, you may have done what God put you here to do. You were a great worker. You must have been a great uh, lover, because a lot of men, and if I'm not wrong, maybe a couple of women, risk their lives to love you. You were a piss poor mother of small children, but you were a great, great mother of young adults. And if you need permission to go, I liberate you. I went back to my house, and something said, Go back. I was in my pajamas. I jumped in my car and ran. And the nurse said, she's just gone. You see, love liberates. It doesn't bind. Love says, I love you. I love you if you're in China. I love you if you're cross town. I love you if you're in Harlem. I love you. I would like to be near you. I'd like to have your arms around me. I'd like to hear your voice in my ear. But that's not possible now. So I love you. Go. Mm. I just love that piece. Dr. Amaya Angelo, or Maya Angelo, that just whenever I hear that, it reminds me of my grandparents speaking to me or my, my mother speaking to me. Um, I wanted to share that clip with you because I think it's a great segue into the section that I want to talk to you about, about being chosen. Um, so many of you that are listening tonight, you've heard pieces of my testimony, 
And I think uh, there's a common thread there. There's a common thread of people, we've all gone through experiences and in life that has kind of kept us down. And we're all asking the question, you know, what did God put us here to do? I love the part in that clip where it says, remember, when you step over the door, you've been raised. Do right. So, you know, that is my challenge to all of you. What is it that God put you here on this earth to do? I never imagined that I would be uh, starting off a radio show, um, sharing my life and, and the hardships that I've gone through with the rest of the world. And yet, you know, love, God's love, it liberates. Um, I believe that God really has a word for the people that are listening tonight. It is not by mistake that you have tuned in. I want to share um, a piece from Marianne Williamson, and, and I'm sure many of you have heard this before, but I think it is powerful, and I think it is a great reminder that we all need. It says that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is not our light, it is our darkness that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I meant to be? Brilliant? Gorgeous? Talented? Fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking back so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I want to talk to you a little bit about when you go through that process of being chosen, there's things that come against you, and and part of that is fear. So what are you afraid of? I used to be afraid of the dark, afraid that just beyond the point that my eyes were allowed to see that maybe there was something out there, maybe there was something lurking, afraid that somehow the darkness would surround me, as if darkness were anything more than the absence of light. I used to be afraid of tomorrow, afraid that who I was would continually dictate who I am, and that who I am might be somebody I didn't like very much, as if there was no such thing as being made new. I used to be afraid of opinions of others, Afraid that the words would break my bo- might not break my bones, but that certainly they would shatter my dreams. As if I started living for the approval of many rather than the glory of one. I used to be afraid of failure. Afraid of looking stupid. Afraid of being wrong. Because who am I to think that that I could ever actually make a difference in this world? as if setbacks were anything more than stepping stones on a path to success. I used to be afraid. But I did a little research, and I kept coming up with the same question. What room does fear have? What room does fear have when I cling to trust? What room does fear have when I lean on hope? What room does fear have when I search for something more? When I discover what's good and when I stand in awe, when I run with perseverance and when I walk by faith and when I rest in his comfort? What room does fear have when I sing with praise? When I take hold of inspiration and explore the possibilities and I step into freedom, What room does fear have when I discover strength, when I embrace courage, when I remember peace, when I declare truth, when I choose joy, and when I experience life? What room does fear have 
when I find perfection in the one place that I never thought to look, in weakness. When I'm saved by the most unlikely of heroes, by grace. When I invited invited into a relationship that is more loving than I could ever have imagined as a child of God. I'll ask you again, what room does fear have? What room does fear have when I step out of darkness and I bask in the light? When I let the past be the past and the future has no limit. When they can talk all they want but the opinion of others doesn't matter. And when failure is nothing more and nothing less than the road by which that I walk to success, what room does fear have? In the words of the Bible, it tells us over 365 times, do not be afraid. As if we needed to hear that, every single day, as if that's how many times that we needed to hear it before we finally believed. What room does fear have? What room does fear have when I make room for love? I want to talk to you a little bit about being chosen, and then we're going to hand this over to Dan to give us our news updates. But... When you are chosen, you know, always expect that there will be a dispute. It's not as if Satan packs up his bags and he leaves town. You know, and I want to ask the question to everyone that is listening tonight, how many of you, whether you admit it to yourself or not, how many of you somewhere in the recesses of your mind believe that you are chosen. Because I believe that all of us that are called, all of us that are listening here tonight, it is not by mistake that you are listening. And every single one of us that is listening tonight has been chosen. You know, God uh, knows us before we are formed. He creates the purpose and then he causes us to rise up. In the process of being chosen, we have to look at the adversities of faith. Faith works best in the midst of adversity. Faith does not work best when everything's going hunky dory, you know, we have no problems. Faith works best when all hell is breaking loose against our life. Faith works best in the nighttime. It is interesting when you look at the first book of the Bible in Genesis and God created the world, he created it out of the nighttime. In the original text, the nighttime literally meant demonic. There was a demonic hold. But when God said, let there be light, there was light. It's also interesting to note that the Jewish holidays, if you look at the Jewish calendar, all of the Jewish holidays begin at midnight. So what that says to me is that God is making daytime out of your nighttime. Sometimes we want to get out of that nighttime process, but let me tell you, you cannot circumvent the nighttime process. You have to go through the nighttime process. And I know some of you that are listening tonight, you're going through that nighttime process, and it's a heavy, heavy load. Some of you have already been through the nighttime process, and you're actually in your morning process. Listen, when you're in your morning process, don't let anyone talk you down. The Bible says that weeping comes in the night, but it is joy that comes in the morning. God makes your daytime out of that nighttime process. You know, all throughout the Bible, you'll find places where God works his greatest miracles in the nighttime process. I know I've certainly gone through many nighttime processes. It is only a process where you are being refined, where you are, you know, just becoming stronger and you're being refined. It is a refining process. We look at Paul and Silas in the Bible, you know, they cried out in the nighttime process in that nighttime midnight hour and God caused an earthquake. We look at 
death, the death angel that came at night, but those that were covered by the lower, by the blood of the lamb, they were saved. So you show me somebody who is having a morning experience, and I will show you somebody who is one in the nighttime process. For people out there that are listening, if you are having a morning experience, don't let anyone intimidate you. People will say, you know, why is it that she's smiling? Why is it that she's so happy? And and the truth is, they don't know the hours that you have spent in prayer. They don't know the hours or the tears that you have cried to earn that smile. So they don't know the times that you have thought about giving up. And when the Lord has said to you, get up one more time, step across that line, keep hanging on. Let me just tell you, the world does turn. And I love to tell you that you will never go through a nighttime process, but that's a lie. It is in that nighttime process that God really, really moves on our life. It is in that process where you know who you are. It is in that process where faith is activated, and faith in those moments becomes like night vision. If you don't have faith, and if you don't have faith to pull you through that, you're going to be ready to quit. When you think about nighttime and Jesus hanging on the cross, and it became dark. But we also know the rest of the story that says on the third day that he rose again. So I just pose to you that it is faith that argues against the darkness. You know, there were in Numbers, in number 17, and you can go look this up later, but it, it talks about 12 tribes. And, you know, they were asked, Moses had asked them to bring 12 tribes um, with 12 rods, and they were asked to put them down. And, and over the midnight process, then it revealed who was going to be chosen and by who made it through that nighttime process, who is rod blossomed. And in number seven, 17, it talks about Aaron's rod blossoming. And, of course, once it blossomed in that morning hour, there were people that were murmuring. You know, there was a little bit of complaining. And let me just tell you that any time that you were chosen, always expect that there's a dispute. I said this earlier that when you're chosen, it doesn't mean that Satan packs up his bags. It doesn't mean that opposition will not come against you. In fact, in more cases, it is going to come against you harder and stronger than ever before because the enemy is afraid of the great works that God is going to do through you. So, you know, God isn't making mistakes up there. You know, he knows exactly where your life is headed. He knows exactly what the plans are for you. Now, you have the opportunity to choose. You choose life or death. God so says, I'm going to show you who's chosen by who makes it through the nighttime process. And let me tell you, in that nighttime process, there is a place between greatness and where you are at today, and it is called the hallway. And you cannot get to greatness without going through that hallway. In the hallway is where God shakes loose all kinds of things. And what we have to do is stop holding on to yesterday. And I know that just me even going through this process is stepping up to start speaking about some of my experiences and stepping into this opportunity to be on the radio show. I had to let go of yesterday. We have to let go of our resume of guilt, our resume of reasons as to why not. And we have to step in to the promises of God. And so as we approach 2015 and, you know, we have our resolutions and we have these new hopes and and the things, God, you know, our nation is being attacked at all corners. 
you know, we have so many of these shows that are talking about some of the things that are going on in our nation. And I really believe that God is looking out across America, across the nation, and he is looking for people that will get wild-eyed, people that will stand up and say, you know what, we're surrounded, and that's okay, because God is greater than all these things that are coming against us. He's looking for a person. He's looking for you right now. Step up. That dream, that passion, whatever it is that God has placed on your heart, today is the day. There's no mistake that you are listening to the Liz Lurie Show, Soldier Talk Radio tonight, and that you are hearing this message. I want to close before I go over to um, Dan and get the, the news updates for the week, but there are three levels to being chosen. That first level is when God chooses you. And he chose you before you were formed. You were no mistake. You were no surprise to him. The second level is when you start to realize that you have been chosen. And you start to realize, you know, that divorce, I came through it. You know, that trauma, whether it was rape or whatever, I came through it. You know, I'm still here. That wreck should have killed me. didn't. That's when you start realizing that God has chosen you. There's something about you that he just must like. The third level is when other people start realizing that you were chosen. And when that happens, you just... I remember um, there's a movie that was out there not too long ago, or maybe it was a little while ago, I'm going to date myself. It was called Facing the Giants. And it talked about not looking at the opposition but looking to God. So I think we need to challenge ourselves. Where is our focus? Is our focus looking to the opposition, to whatever it is that's coming against us? Is our focus looking to God? And that is where it needs to be directed. So... With that, without further ado, I'm going to hand this back over to my great friend, my co-host and producer, Dan the Butcher, to give us an update um, and take a break here, and we'll be back. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying Cap is stupid, bro. Sackhead Clicked. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Socko as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Liz Laura Show, Soldier Talk Radio. And, boy, I'm glad that we got to take a break right there because there's no way I could have even started uh, to talk about any news after uh, just an amazing opening from Liz. I, I was I was just absolutely left uh, speechless. Uh, Liz, just absolutely amazing with what you did with the opening, and 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 I, and I surely feel that people are going to be very inspired by that. And you know, some of the news stories that, of course, the news has been dominated the last two days, and uh, about what happened with the Paris terrorist attack, and and I think everybody is very familiar now with what the outcome of that was today, with the uh, 
with the uh, two brothers that were still on the run being killed during a raid by the French police that also unfortunately took the lives of four of uh, hostages uh, that these two gentlemen were holding, uh, as well as, uh, thankfully, there was uh, another 15 people that were released. So I think people are pretty well familiar with how that turned out and and some of the connections to al-Qaeda and stuff like that. So I'm not going to address that too much, but uh, there's two stories that have really, really gone under the radar the last couple of days. And uh, and the first one I want to talk about has to do with President Obama uh, proposing free uh, community college tuition uh, for everyone. And, uh, and, and what that involved was, you know, first of all, folks, the price of this is going to be in the tens to hundreds of billion dollars annually. And, and uh, of course, President Obama is going to need the approval of Congress to realize his proposal for making two years of community college free for students. Uh, so far, that plan doesn't have an official price tag, but we know what these type of plans run. Anything the government is involved, these plans get into the tens and hundreds of billions of dollars. But uh, so far, the plan doesn't have an official price tag other than significant, according to White House officials. <laughs> White House officials are calling the price tag for this significant. Uh, the basic breakdown will be the federal government, uh, a.k.a. you and I, the taxpayers, will pay 80% of that. And then the states, a.k.a. us, the taxpayers, on the state level, will pay the other 20% of that. Uh, if all 50 states participate, the proposal is estimated to benefit 9 million students at an average of $3,800 in tuition. And so here is a, a uh, this is going to be a very centerpiece of President Obama's State of the Union address, uh, uh, this free community college tuition for everybody. Uh, the other story that was really that that I was taken back, and, and this is something that we reported on Pundit Press, and, and, and I'll wrap it up with this and turn it back over to Liz. Uh, there was a new report from uh, from the Christian watchdog group, Open Doors. And, and, and what this report revealed, it revealed that Christian persecution is reaching new levels across the world. Christians are facing increased instances of imprisonment, rape, and torture. Uh, and if you listen to my show last night, and uh, this is some of the stuff I uh, uh, touched on a bit too, but, but this report, uh, in, in the report, Open Doors said, Today Open Doors released its annual watch list, which ranks the top 50 countries where it's most dangerous and difficult to be a Christian. This year the threshold was higher for a country to make the list, indicating the worldwide levels of persecution have increased. Topping the 2015 list for the 13th consecutive year is North Korea. Africa saw the most rapid growth of persecution, while the Middle East saw targeted attacks resulting in a mass exodus of Christians. Of course, we know that in the Middle East right now, we are actually seeing a genocide against Christians in some portions of the Middle East. The report went on to state approximately 100 million Christians are persecuted worldwide, making them one of the most persecuted religious groups in the world. Islamic extremism is the main source of persecution in 40 of the 50 countries on the 2015 watch list. While persecution can take many forms, Christians throughout the world risk imprisonment, torture, rape, and even death as a result of their faith. Christian persecution is defined as any hostility experienced as a result of one's identification with Christ. Recent examples include, once again, imprisonment, torture, beheadings, rape, loss of home, and assets. While violent persecution is most often reported by media, nonviolent persecution is also on the rise. Violence has increased dramatically in Iraq, Syria, Nigeria, but Christians in other countries are experiencing persecution in their personal lives through family, community, and national spheres of life. Christians are often ostracized by family exclusion, the loss of a job, or even rejection from the community. 
Uh, David Curry, who's the president and CEO of Open Doors, had this, this to say. He said, even Christian majority states are experiencing unprecedented levels of exclusion, discrimination, and violence. The 2015 World Watch list reveals that a staggering number of Christians are becoming victims of intolerance and violence because of their faith. They are, fa- they are being forced to be more secretive about their faith. The goal of the watch, uh, the World Watch list is to keep Christian persecution on the radar of those enjoying the privileges of freedom. The perpetrators of persecution need to know that the world is watching and stands in opposition to persecution. As for the persecuted, we want them to know they are not forgotten. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Liz. Wow. Thank you, Dan. I I appreciate you keeping us up to speed. I think it's interesting as we are seeing so much persecution uh, of Christians. Uh, Some of you may know from some of the interviews that I've been on, um, and some of you may not know, but I used to work at World Vision. So um, after getting out of the United States Army, working in intelligence, I went into um, actually did a short stint um, in the VA, working in the chaplain's office, and then uh, transitioned over to World Vision. So it was the largest global humanitarian aid, and, and I will say air quotes, Christian humanitarian aid, because that, that, that would probably be another show in and of itself. But back in 2010, there were actually six workers that were killed in Pakistan, so known as, like, Christian humanitarian aid workers, never covered in the news. Uh, While I was working at World Vision, we actually had two people that were killed in South Safar in 2013, and there was nothing that was talked about. And so, you know, it's interesting because you look at, like, stories in the Bible and how there's persecution of Christians. Folks, it's going on today. It's just that our news, our administration, we're not covering it. We're not making statements about that, but it's happening. It it happened while I was still working there. Um, And I think it's even more reason for us as uh, conservatives, those of us that hold up the Constitution, that believe in freedom and equality, to continue to unite, to continue to stand up, to stand up for our First Amendment, a Second Amendment. Um, I always got to throw that one in there. But to to give the freedom of speech. And, and, you know, I think as a Christian, there's even more of a responsibility because we are in, um, in essence, a, a, a battle for holy war. You know, we're because we're being persecuted against, we're being called to either serve the audience of many or the audience of one. Um, I wanted to just share a little piece. Um, when I had met uh, Ken McClinton over at the Exceptional Conservative back in, let's see, was it October, November? I'll start bleeding together. Uh, 2014 <laughs> at the Miss Veteran America competition, um, I had given a short version of a recitation that kind of talked about believing and encouraging the people to stand up because, you know, I look at myself and it's like I'm I'm just <laughs> I'm just a little five foot one, almost five one girl from Oregon, you know, that that believed in the Constitution, that chose to stand up, that chose to fight for her country, that even after everything that I went through, chose to step up, I you know, I saw a need with my fellow soldiers <clears throat> not being taken care of and chose to, even if my knees were shaking, even if I was scared, to stand up and speak. And so that was kind of the motivation behind this. So I just want to share this, and then I know Dan and I are kind of going to close the show out with getting into a little bit of a conversation about maybe some of the things that you don't hear about um, in some of the other interviews. And and this was um, titled, Your One Wild and Precious Life. So it begins here, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Believe. Believe that all things are possible to him who believes. 
as the Bible says, all things are possible through Christ Jesus. Believe in your dreams and that you are loved. Believe that you can make a difference. Believe when others may not. Believe that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that you just might be that light for someone else. Believe in each other. Believe in yourself. Believe that the best is still yet to come. What will you do with your one wild and precious life? It has been said that one spark can ignite a fire. One tree can start a forest. One smile begins a friendship. And one star can guide a ship lost at sea. One vote can change a nation. And one step must start each journey. One candle can extinguish darkness. And one word must start each prayer. One touch can show that you care. One voice speaking with wisdom and one heart can know what's true. One life can make a difference. And that difference begins with you. With God, what seems like a hopeless situation is not only possible, favorable. Because only God can turn your mess into a message, your trial into a triumph, a test into a testimony, and only God can make a victim into a victory. His power is made perfect in our weakness, so let us rejoice in our trials and hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, because he who promised is faithful, was faithful, and will always be faithful, no matter how hopeless the situation. So I ask you once again, America, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? That that is my challenge and my question to you tonight. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over so Dan can come back here on the line. I know we had a couple <laughs> things we wanted to discuss. Oh, you bet. You know, the, and I just want to give a shout out real quick to uh, all of our listeners on SHR Media. Uh, you know, tonight's show uh, is really, you, you're kind of getting the theme of what tonight's show is. And, and, a, and a lot of this is getting to know Liz and, 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 and how precious her faith is to her and how important it is in her life and and how that's going to influence uh and you know and how it has helped her overcome and and continue to overcome a lot of the uh of battles that she continues to to fight to this day and i just want to i just want to kind of give a heads up to our listeners on shr media uh this won't affect our listeners on uh, pundit press radio or, or any of our listeners on block talk radio but there is the possibility that we are going to run over the top of the hour. Uh, obviously, this being the first show, we're still getting our timing down. And so, but there are a couple of things that that we really wanted to talk about tonight, uh, right here. And and so, just a little heads up uh, that for all of our listeners on SHR Media, that more than likely uh, we're going to run past the top of the hour. And at that time, uh, of course, SHR Media will. Be be breaking away uh, for for the uh, for the next show that's on, which is the Evan Miller Report, and I and, and I highly encourage everybody to uh, uh, to listen to uh, Jason Miller and uh, Corey Evan. They do an outstanding job, and if you didn't hear the if you did not hear the coverage of them today uh, uh, with the coverage they were giving earlier today with all of the breaking.
breaking news uh, of the situation and everything that was coming out of Paris. Uh, Jason was really on top of the day and did an outstanding job. So if we do run over the top of the hour, uh, we do apologize and, and for the SHR media listeners that will have to break away for the uh, Evan Miller report. Uh, but I highly encourage everybody to make sure they check out the Evan Miller report. Uh, Liz, this kind of comes into what you and I were discussing off the phone. And, yeah, you know, as I was looking for different things to promote the show over the past uh, couple of weeks, uh, you had, of course, you put together just an outstanding, amazing video. A lot of people don't know, Liz is very talented as far as marketing and, and promotions. <laughs> And stuff, and so I really suggest you go to her YouTube page and, and check out some of the stuff there. But when I was coming across, Liz had made a video, and, and what this video, one of the videos that she posted on her YouTube page, she had gone and was visiting a, a local office, and what she was trying to do was very simply get a new ID card. And I'll let Liz explain all that. But what struck me was is they denied her this id card even though she brought several forms of identification with her including a military identification all of her paperwork with her with her case and what has been happening with her for folks liz's battle which she actually continues to fight today people are very familiar with her advocacy work and and fighting on the behalf of of other veterans and and other and, and other and, and, and other military people, but they don't know and realize that Liz continues to fight this battle herself personally. And, and in this video, she was denied. She's been fighting this battle for 15 years, ladies and gentlemen, that she's been fighting this. And y'all are, and everybody's familiar with her with her personal story by now and and what happened. But I want Liz to go a little bit further. So that the audience can, out there can understand what she continues to battle through today, as well as uh, why she does the advocacy work in helping other uh, people in her situation, uh, you know, fighting the same types of fights. Yeah, you know, the story that Dan is referencing, it, and it's funny because this video that he's referencing, and you can find it out on my YouTube link, just put Liz Luris. YouTube in and it should come up. I um, might have to scroll through some of the videos a little bit. But uh, this video was the very first video that I made just kind of like off the cuff because I was so just shocked. I mean, and I shouldn't be shocked because I've gone through so many things with the VA and with the military that nothing should surprise me. Um, for those of you that are tuning in that don't know my story, which I'm sure is not as not that many, but um, I had joined the Army um, six months before graduating, shipped off to boot camp, was in military intelligence, um, you know, was up for West Point preparatory, had my top secret clearance, so the highest level of the United States Army, and then I experienced the first rape. Um, in the military, and then subsequently, after that rape, went through two more as a form of retaliation and spent months going through just incredibly intense retaliation, which ultimately resulted in them illegally discharging me. And I always want to make this point clear, I was honorably discharged, but what the American people don't realize is that so many of our veterans, even if you're honorably discharged, lose their benefits. And so that is what happened to me. They gave this bogus code. You know, there was, you know, no attorneys involved. There was no due process. It literally was some uh, drill sergeant, you know, some sergeant that had zero education, and he just had it. You know, obviously they don't like rape victims in the military, and so they want to silence you. They want to discredit you. And he discharged me from the military, putting a code on my paperwork that basically made me lose all of my enlistment bonuses. It made me lose all opportunity to even get an ID card to even be recognized for raising my right hand and swearing 
to die and lose my innocence and everything else that comes along with what you would do as a soldier for your country and what you would sacrifice. And I am not the only one. Um, the DOD has reported that from 2000 to 2007 or 2006 that there were over 31,000 of us. And on a, on a show previous show with Dan, we had a gentleman, Aru, come on the line, and, and he was talking about going through the same thing, um, not for a military sexual trauma experience, but um, that he was, it's kind of the way that they silence whistleblowers or anyone that they just kind of want to quiet their stories. And he was back, his story was back in 1988. And so this is something, this is not new to the VA, this is not new to the DOD, this is not new to the military. Um, it is just a retaliatory tactic that they use. And so, you know, I got out of the military quite a long time ago, um, and here I was just last year. Uh, what people don't know is that I have gone through a I want to say at least three, it might be four, <laughs> I try not to remember those things, court cases with the VA proving the rapes. I mean, I have hospital reports, police reports, uh, you know, probably more documented proof than most. And so I actually am, because of some of the things that happened in the military and whatnot, um, I am considered as of April 2014, a fully disabled veteran. So here I walk into the veteran's office. You know, I, I've waited well over a decade for this, for the opportunity to get a military ID, the same military ID that anyone that is fully disabled, anyone that is uh, retired from the military would have, the same ID card that I should have had years ago, that took me all those years to fight for. And I literally, and and everyone that knows me personally knows the stacks of documentation. I mean, I have file cabinets. You want to talk about, like, anal retentive? That would be me. I mean, there's a reason why I was in military <laughs> intelligence. Here I bring in, you know, even though they said, all you need is you need the final court paper, from your April 2014 court case, you know, after having to go through this and be re-victimized over and over and over, uh, all you have to have is this last documentation, and you'll be fine. So I go into my local Portland, Oregon um, office to get my ID card. And, and mind you, I have a VA ID card. This is the um, Department of Defense. ID card, and there, there is, it gets really complicated, but there is a second ID card. So I walk in there, and I already have my other ID card. I have these huge things to prove, legal papers, you know, signed, sealed, delivered. And the person that is there, which was, I, I want to say he was like um, – Coast Guard. He wasn't even like Army, Marine, or Air Force, or Marine. And he doesn't believe that I'm really a veteran. And of course, mind you, I'm wearing my civilian clothes, but that shouldn't matter. And here my five foot one self walks in, and I'm denied. He doesn't believe me. He argues me at the desk. And so Dan, you know, him and I have this conversation just the other day when we're trying to talk about what we're going to share about today on the show. And I said, you know, the funny thing is, I made that video, and you know what? Here it is, January 2015. You know what? I still don't have that ID card. That's the struggle. But I believe so much in stepping up and being a voice for my brothers and sisters that are out there who have fought for our nation, that have raised their right hand, that has sworn to protect and defend our liberty, our freedom, and our American Constitution. I believe in that so much with every fiber in my being that even if that means that I continue to go through another 15 years, I mean, I've already gone through 15 years of retaliation, even still, I believe in it. And I will continue to fight because it is the right thing to do. And, you know, 
we'll see where this goes. I mean, it's just something where you continue to press forward. Um, you know, we'll see. I know we have an episode on the 6th of February where we're going to dive in deep in the issue of illegal discharges with veterans. And we're going to actually talk to another veteran who is not a military sexual trauma veteran. He's a combat veteran, eight years in the military, multiple deployments, and he's going through the same exact thing. I think America would be shocked at how often this happens to our brave warriors and the fact that they are not given the same respect and the same dignity that they are putting their lives on the line to fight for. Wow. I'm going to take a breath. Liz. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, Liz, you know, it is hard to believe that, you know, we, we've we run over a little bit, and, and, and just to let everybody know, SHR Media has been very gracious. Jason Miller and... Corey Evan have been very gracious to uh, to let us run over into their show a little bit. So SHR uh, Media is still with us. Um, Jason Miller is just he's one of the true nice guys uh, out there today. Awesome. And Jason, thank you very much uh, for allowing Liz to uh, to run over a little bit and take up some of your time of your show tonight. We she greatly appreciate it, my friend. Uh, well, Liz, we're to the end of the show. We yeah. it is absolutely amazing. amazing. <laughs> the first show is is under your is you, you is it's 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 under your belt and uh and, and I know that you have a, a a few things that you want to say in closing uh talking about next week's show uh and and what it's about. Yeah, you know, and again, I just I'm so incredibly honored. I'm so incredibly blessed that everyone is tuning in today. I know we have so many of our brave warriors that are listening tonight that, you know, maybe haven't listened to a radio show like this before. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your service and your sacrifice. And and honestly, you know, whether you are in the battle right now and you're continuing to work forward um, and move forward to get the recognition that you deserve, I just want you to know that no matter where this radio station or this show goes, that I am for you, that there are people that are for you. And that is the message and the hope of this show. Uh, Because so long as I have air in my lungs to breathe, it is going to be to fight for you guys because I believe in the oath that I took that I will never leave my brothers and sisters behind. And you are not forgotten. None of your stories and none of the parents that are listening that have lost their children. So, again, you know, thank you to Blog Talk Radio, to Dan and Jane for being just amazing people and believing in me and giving me this opportunity, to Pundit Press, to SHR Media, Jason, who's been an awesome mentor and giving me a little bit of time to talk over into his show. I just so greatly appreciate that. To Ken McClinton, um, over at the Exceptional Conservative for kind of just opening the door and giving me a chance to crack up on his show and kind of cut it up. To Annie, who I'm not sure if you're still in the chat room or not, but over at Southern Sense um, for giving me the opportunity to speak on her show. Golf Dogs, Smokey. I mean, there's so many of you. To the Underground Professor and Agador, I mean, just you guys are such an amazing family of patriots that I'm so honored and blessed to be a part of. Make sure to tune in to the Liz Lurish Show, Soldier Talk Radio, next week, January 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Central, and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to take a two-hour show special on that. You don't want to miss it. I have got three just amazing parents that are going to be on and talking about their children that have served in the military um, and what they have gone through with losing them to suicide in the military and kind of what they're doing to help others, um, as well as we are also bringing our combat veteran, Andrew Jones, who is also an author um, and runs a magazine, and he has done a lot of extensive work with 
fighting the issue of suicide in the military. So I am that is a show that is near and dear to my heart. You don't want to miss it, so make sure you tune in next week. And, again, thank you, Dan. I think we've got another patriotic clip to close us out with and turn it over to Jason and um, Evan over at the Evan Miller Show. Well, you know, once again, Liz, it's been an absolutely amazing first broadcast. You did an outstanding job. And everybody, once again, you've been listening to the Liz Laura Show, Soldier Talk Radio on Pundit Press Radio, SHR Media, and Blog Talk Radio. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Liz? God bless. (laughs) 